Colleges and universities are building more and ever more luxurious on-campus housing every year. This week, evolving student residences. Let's take 10 and take a look. As Canadian colleges and universities seek to attract more students from further afield across Canada or internationally, they're finding they need to construct on-campus residences to accommodate them. Particularly for teenage students and their parents, safe, comfortable, modern dorms are an important selling feature. Western University in London, Ontario has built thousands of on-campus residential units in the past decade. Most with a semi-private floor plan that see up to four students sharing a washroom and living room, but with private bedrooms. Community colleges like Fanshawe have been following suit, offering students comfortable and private accommodation in residences like Merlin House, $23 million dormitory opened in 2009. We really don't see amenities arms races in Canada anything like at American institutions. For example, this $7 million leisure pool at Texas Tech features a water slide, tanning pool, and poolside cafe. But nonetheless, the bar for campus dorms is continually being raised in Canada. Russia University College is the Catholic women's only college affiliated with Western. In 2013, Russia opened a luxurious new residence, and I had to go and take a look. Brescia's previous residence was constructed in 1927. The new $30 million facility features 290 single bedrooms, with a full wall of closets, window seat, a queen-size bed, personal vanity, and ensuite glass and marble shower, shared with an adjoining room. Every floor of the building features a common room with kitchen, dining, and living room facilities. And as you might expect for a school with a leading food and nutritional sciences program, Brescia's residence has a new Marche-style dining pavilion featuring plenty of local and organic food options. Brescia's residence may be unique in the country for offering students room service in their dorms. The University of Winnipeg opened a new residence in 2009 on a unique model. McFeeters Hall combines 172 traditional dorm-style residences on the upper stories with 25 townhomes on the ground floor, half of which are reserved for community housing. In many provinces, universities and particularly colleges face major hurdles in getting approvals to use capital debt to finance student residences. In BC, the provincial government doesn't want capital debt on its balance sheet and refuses to fund student residence construction. Thompson Rivers University is one of many across the country that has found a solution in public-private partnership. Residence Development Corp. is one of several management companies that will front the capital costs for design and construction of student residences and will even step in to manage the facility or student life. RDC has similar residences in Ontario at Western, UIT, Guelph and Trent. Toronto's Ryerson University partnered with MPI Group to construct a new 23-story residence slated to open in September 2016. Traditionally a commuter school, Ryerson's residence capacity will be boosted 30% through this one building. In Calgary, State Polytechnic opened its new tower residence in 2008. The suites feature full kitchens with granite countertops and walnut cabinets, and there's a full-service Starbucks in the lobby. When institutions don't build their own residences alone or in partnership, private developers are quick to notice unmet demand and will build their own. Sometimes these are immediately adjacent to campus, such as this 19-story apartment building outside the gates of Western University, or this 15-story tower being built across the street from Fanshawe College. When completed, it will cast a significant shadow across the front doors of campus. Some institutions have made residences a vital part of their academic mission. The University of Waterloo opened its Velocity residence in 2008 as an incubator for entrepreneurial new businesses. This dorm incubator was a deliberate attempt to replicate the conditions inside a Harvard dorm that led to the establishment of Facebook. The Velocity residence had meeting spaces with technology, entrepreneurship training, and pitch sessions to potential investors. The effort seems to have worked remarkably well, too. One of the first graduates of the Velocity residence, Ted Livingston, went on to found Kick Interactive. Within 23 months of graduating, he had donated a million dollars to establish the Velocity Fund, startup seed capital for future student ventures. We talked in a previous episode about the rise of part-time commuter students on campus. 
and at some institutions, even commuter students need dorm rooms from time to time. Way back in 2007, Mansfield University in Pennsylvania opened the first dorms for commuter students that I had heard about. The facility included lounges and computer labs and dorm rooms that commuter students could use when they really needed to spend a night on campus. UBC Okanagan has several elaborate collegia, which amount to common rooms for commuter students. Surveys have found that the students use the facilities first and foremost for studying, followed by relaxing or napping, cooking, and socializing. Senior students are paid to organize programming for commuter students at the Collegia. Just last month, Ryerson University announced the opening of a new commuter hostel for off-campus students. Nine rooms are available for $35 a night or $45 for a pair willing to share. The rooms have bathrooms, beds, and internet access. To discourage partying, rooms can be booked no more than six nights a month by any one student, and they're not generally available on Friday or Saturday nights. New residences aren't always luxury apartments in the sky. In Terrace, BC, I got to visit a new residence at Northwest Community College, constructed out of the same work camp trailers that many students will live in as they work on site. The 49 residence units cost Northwest just $400,000. What's more, because the trailers amount to a form of experiential learning for students, the BC government was prepared to fund it. The campus dorm experience may be bifurcating, with private luxury condos at one end and smaller, less private facilities at the other. At Ryerson, the tissue issue demonstrates that Canadian students resent inequality, even in the number of plies of toilet paper. Ryerson's student paper, The Eye Opener, investigated Plygate when it discovered particularly luxurious two-ply toilet tissue in the washrooms on the top two stories of the administration building, near the offices of the president, provost, and several vice presidents. A Ryerson spokesperson explained that the two-tier tissue has been in place for about a decade, depending in part on the plumbing capacity of individual buildings. Plygate made headlines internationally, and three other Ontario universities, Toronto, Guelph, and Ottawa, felt obliged to state publicly that their toilet tissue was equitably distributed. But one ply tissue is just the start. For a glimpse of just how tight space in residence could become, take a look at these student dorms in Hong Kong. Based on the capsule hotels of Japan, students pay $3,500 a month for a 6 by 3 by 4 foot slot. Barely larger than the drawers in a morgue. You won't catch me dead in one of these things. But it wouldn't surprise me to see dorm rooms like this in Vancouver someday, as international students come to UBC with lower and lower expectations for personal space. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. I hope you'll take a moment to like this video, to leave a comment, or even to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, or by email. I hope to see you next time. But before you go, here's a new music video of sorts from the University of Victoria, in case you missed it. The switch and the lobby I no longer care. When institutions don't build their own residences, individual uh,
One more time. At Ryerson, the tissue issue. <laughs> tissue issue. Tissue issue. <clears throat> Plygate. 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 Plygate made headlines internationally. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Solid. <laughs>